Here we look at this uh, word counterspace, which is essentially a synonym of the ether of field. Uh, they have these th this mix-up where sometimes they use it as synonym, sometimes they use it as something else. This is the general notion of this counter space. This uh, which uh, who, uh, this uh, what's his name Wheeler? Uh, he he does does that on his channel. Okay, he talks about counter space and all this other nonsense. Okay, so what is space? Space is <clears throat> uh, allegedly a uh, where the forces are, the physical forces are. You can determine some of these forces through experiments, observation, and measurement. The counter space is uh, like a negative space, I guess. It's where the spiritual forces are. And you have conscience. Uh, the only way to reach them is through like meditation. It's uh, your subliminal experience. It's a totally different world. And they want to uh, look at counter space as a place where, or yeah, region. In the, in the universe somewhere, or maybe in the mind. I have no idea where this counter space is, but it kind of counteracts uh, uh, space. So it's like, in a way, uh, the opposite. Whereas space has all these physical forces, the counter space has these spiritual forces. And, uh, you know, they do merge somewhere in the middle there. And when they merge, well, some uh, great things happen, according to all these people, all these proponents. Okay, and... Um, uh, so here's someone who, fellow who decided to illustrate one example. This is just an example, okay, of what counter space is as opposed to space, okay? And so he says, look, uh, if you look at it from a geometric point of view, space is uh, from a point outwards to infinity, whereas counter space is from infinity to a single point, okay? So we have infinity in both directions, except that one's going out and the other one's coming in. That's more or less the notion. And it's like uh, the clash between the physical space and the uh, spiritual space, if you can try to understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> I don't understand what I'm saying, so please don't, <laughs> don't hold it against me, okay? That's more or less the notion they have of space and counter space. Now, all I can tell you is uh, what it, space and counter space are for the purposes of physics. Okay, that I can tell you. Okay, and here it is. I illustrate that as well. And here it is. Space is that black stuff that's between the earth and the moon. We call it nothing, vacuum. And counter space is uh, where you put your beer on the counter. You know, it's the space that's next to it, all around the, your mug. Uh, it's the play, it's all that space that where you can put more beers. You know, you can put a lot of beers in there. And, and that's called counter space. Okay, so that's all it is in, for the purposes of physics. I hope that's clear. Okay, that's, that's all we have for counter space. Counter space is a word that um, idiots, you know, uh, people with big ideas, they create these uh, things. They're spiritual. They're people who are religious people way deep inside them, and they bring all that garbage into physics. Physics is objective, and they bring all this nonsense and say, hey, hey we, we can merge the spiritual world with a physical world. We can merge physics with religion. You know, the Templeton Prize, so to speak. I guess that's what they're after. <laughs> okay, so who created this counter space nonsense? Okay, and here it is. It's this fellow called uh, by the name of Rudolf Steiner. Steiner, he's a, or was a German uh, philosopher, or just a charlatan, that's all he was, and he's the inventor of counter space. And you can see what kind of nonsense he, uh, he wrote, uh, some, of, some of the books he wrote uh, early in the uh, 20th century, the occult uh, uh, movements in the 19th century, the dead are with us. <laughs> I love that one. Man, uh, hieroglyph uh, of the universe, an outline of uh, quote, uh, science and uh, true and false paths of spiritual investigation. So you can see that this fellow was um, into a lot of nonsense. Uh, he was trying to merge or try and bring in uh, consciousness, uh, mind, all this other stuff that a lot of religious folk want to bring into physics. And they call themselves physicists or scientists or whatever. And they bring all that nonsense in here. Uh, here's uh, the article, uh, a little piece of the article on this, uh, Rudolf Steiner in, uh, in the Wikipedia. It says, Steiner attempted to find a synthesis between science and spirituality. His philosophical work of these years, which he termed spiritual science, I love that, 
sought to uh, apply what he saw as the clarity of thinking characteristic of Western philosophy to spiritual questions, okay? Differentiating this approach from what he considered to be vaguer approaches to mysticism, okay? So he was saying, look, we can bring science to bear upon <clears throat> the spiritual world. And obviously he meant vice versa, right? In 1899, Steiner experienced what he described as a life-transforming inner encounter with the being of Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. The experience of meeting Christ occurred after a tremendous inner struggle. Okay. He was fighting with himself. He was, you know, uh, looking at the skies and seeing Jesus, I guess, right? The experience culminated in my standing in the spiritual presence of the mystery of Golgotha in a most profound and solemn festival of knowledge. His relationship to Christianity thereafter remained entirely founded upon personal experience. Okay, he was just giving us his testimonial that he saw Christ, God, or the devil, or whoever, and he was bringing that into science and vice versa, applying science as he um, understood it to the spiritual world, says, hey, you know, we can put science in there and understand it more rationally, you know, the spiritual world, especially Christianity and, you know, uh, gods and angels and ghosts and who knows what. Okay, so here, um, uh, one fellow uh, that I contacted, because I usually try to let them know I'm going to talk about their, uh, er, uh, their um, uh, work, uh, their blogs, whatever, their articles. So I usually contact them. Turns out this fellow corrected me and said, look, you know, uh, the guy you mentioned, he just puts stuff on my uh, site. I let them put them in there, but obviously they all believe in the same thing. So I guess in the end, it doesn't matter. But this is what this fellow has to say about Steiner. Okay. And here it is. He says, uh, not only does he mention Steiner, he mentions these other folk. And the ones at the bottom, uh, he didn't mention the, the ones on the bottom right there. And uh, those are people who are dissidents of the establishment. Uh, most of them are dead now. The only one alive is Hilster there at the end. And all these people criticize the establishment. They don't like what they hear out there, see out there, especially anything related to the word time. They are fanatically against the word time and anything related to time. They don't like this time dilation. They don't like, uh, you know, anything where you have space, time, bending, and so on. They, they don't agree with any of that. And, of course, on that side, we're all on the same boat. Uh, the problem is what these uh, folk always proposed. That's where I have a problem with all of them. And uh, the fellow here is uh, Nick Thomas, the guy you see there in the approximately uh, bottom left, okay? And uh, the fellow who runs the uh, site is, I think his name is John Etch or Eck, uh, one of those uh, two. I don't know how to pronounce his name exactly. But anyways, what does he say about counter space? Or these, what do they say? They say counter space is a space in which subtle forces work, such as those of life, which are not amenable to ordinary measurement. It is the polar opposite of what? Of Euclidean space. Okay, so we're talking about geometry, right? So they're going to do some kind of uh, counterpart to that. It was discovered by observations of Rudolf Steiner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay, instead of having its ideal elements in a plane at infinity, it has them in a point at infinity. Uh -huh. There are lines and planes rather than lines and points as in ordinary space. Okay, we call this point the counter space infinity. Uh -huh. We have the counter space infinity. I hope you're following along. So that a plane incident with it is said to be a, an ideal plane or plane at infinity in counter space. It only appears thus for a different kind of consciousness, namely a peripheral one which experiences such a point as an infinite inwardness in contrast to our normal consciousness which experiences an infinite outwardness. Again, it's like... Uh, Outwards and inwards, that, that's what it's all about, uh, the space counter space. It's like uh, the opposite of space. You have space and you see it outwards and it goes to infinity. That's, that's the way they look at it, right? They say, oh, it's infinite. Space is infinite. Of course, it's not because it's absolutely nothing, nonsense to treat space as a physical object. And the only way you can apply the word infinite or finite is to a physical object. You can say the, uh, the uh, tree is finite. And hopefully it's not infinite. There is no such thing as an infinite object because all objects are finite because that's the definition of the word object. That which has shape. All shapes are finite. And these people invented something new. They said, look, it's the counter space. 
Uh -huh. What do you mean by that? Well, instead of looking outwards, you know, to the infinity of this space or thingy or whatever they have in their back of their minds, they say we got to look at it uh, introspective, the inwards to a point, from infinity to a point or through an infinite point, right? And, um, and so they, they kind of merge, okay? You have the outward vision and the inward vision, but the inward vision is all from conscience, from personal experience. Okay, uh, you know, you have to take a lot of drugs <laughs> to do this kind of thing. We're getting to that. <laughs> okay, so what did this uh, fellow Nick Thomas say? He says the following. He says, uh, he calls it the ether force, counter space research. He does research on this stuff. Great. Research is only truly spiritual when it is related to what lies on the other side of that threshold. Okay, so you got to get to the other side to, to really experience this uh, counter space stuff. Okay, it says our consciousness on this side of the threshold is objective. To cross the threshold <laughs> requires a kind of inversion, inversion of consciousness. To the research concerns the inversion of consciousness in relation to counter space for application to science. Yeah, you got to invert your consciousness. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly how to do that. <laughs> how do you <laughs> in order to understand counter space, you got to do a counter consciousness. <laughs> you got to look at it from the outside in. I don't invert yourself, stand on your head. I, I have no idea. In fact, one one of the fellows out there said the following. He said, <laughs> "I love this one, Bill. Please consider doing psychedelics if you haven't already." <laughs> Based on hearing others' others experiences, you might be able to expand on your theories in a major way. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I've never did any drugs in my life, uh, even marijuana. I, I don't do any drugs at all. I don't even smoke. Never smoked in my life. Uh, I only do two drugs, and that's uh, beer and wine. <laughs> and sometimes I get a schnapps, a, uh, a rum or something like that, you know, but... Otherwise, I don't touch uh, any of the drugs. In fact, uh, uh, when I was uh, detained, arrested, and they took me into the um, to the prison to the jail in uh, Maricopa Jail County Jail in uh, Phoenix, and uh, the first <laughs> shock that I had in prison was seeing this guy with holes all over his arms and legs. He had just holes everywhere. There was there was not an inch. <laughs> not a centimeter without a hole in his legs and in his arms. He just, all his life, he just did drugs, of just putting that needle in there. He had no place, no same place to put a new needle into. And that shocked me uh, to see a guy like that. And then when they uh, transferred me uh, to um, the Santa Clara Jail in California, <laughs> and uh, first day I was there, you know, I was waiting for them to book me. And... Uh, one of the cops was there, and, and I saw this guy on the floor. He was just shaking, you know. <laughs> and I and I looked at him. I said, like, you know, this guy needs help, you know. Uh, please get a doctor or something. You know? So I said to the cop, I said, uh, what's wrong with him? And the cop, just matter of fact, you know, casually, he said, oh, don't worry about him. He's recovering from heroin withdrawal. <laughs> And then I found two more guys inside the prison uh, that also were recovering. And so it's kind of nasty stuff. I don't recommend people doing drugs at all, especially some of those hard drugs. Anyways, uh, once again, I bring my good fellow uh, Torquemada. I wish uh, he would be around for some of these folks so that, uh, you know, he would do a good job with them. 